If you enjoy the content, I would appreciate you hitting the subscribe button and checking out my socials. After deconstructing and rebuilding, Na'Vi is currently sitting in championship contention, battling for trophies and even winning majors. Their major MVP JL is a tactical freak, anchoring the B-bomb side of Dust 2, taking down multiple adversaries if they take a step on his land. Hey I'm Smirky, and today I want to look at JL and how he defaults B on the CT side of Dust 2, so let's begin. You need a good site to buy and sell skins easily. Well, you're in luck, because today's sponsor is Skin.Land, and they have a limited $10 bonus you can grab. How do you use Skin.Land? Well, it's easy. First, log into Skin.Land with your Steam account and set your trade link. At this point, you can view and buy the vast array of skins. If you click on a skin, you can compare it with the lowest price on Steam. Like this skin for example, which is cheaper on skin.land. When ready, you can easily deposit your balance with a wide range of different payment options, ranging from Visa, PayPal, Bitcoin, or you can sell your skins and use code SMIRKY to get a free $10 if you sell skins for over $100. Once done, accept the trade and that's it. Thanks skin.land for the sponsor and don't forget to check the description for the link and code. Before we have a look at how JL plays the B-bomb site, I just want to quickly talk about on how JL gets over to the site. When JL wants to cross over to B, he tends to put his back against the wall, jump and run across. By doing this, it should make it a lot harder for Opus in Suicide to try and pick you off. Alternatively though, you could also be used as bait. In this round, JL is going to run in the middle of CT mid. When he jumps across, Wonderful is going to peak soon afterwards, hopefully getting any Opus crosshairs away from Wonderful, allowing him to go for the peak. Let's take a look at what JL does at the start of the round. When JL comes over to B, he typically throws a Molotov. This Molotov will either burn T's at trying to run out, or force them to use a smoke, which you can use to your advantage by either listening for the sound cue, or killing them as you run through. After throwing the Molotov, there are quite a few scenarios where JL likes to watch for any players running out, trying to punish them for not respecting the molly. In this round though, JL is going to be jiggling in and out, making himself a moving target, making it difficult for the T's to kill him. In round 20 you can see something similar, JL will throw the Molotov, but instead of playing behind Big Box, he will play behind Pillar. Initially he will play some more anti-flash, using the pillars to dodge any potential flashbangs. Then afterwards, he will do something similar to before, where he will jiggle in and out, ready to catch any T's disrespecting the Molotov. When you feel like it's safe and the T's aren't going to push, you could throw a HE behind the Molly. The intention of this HE is to damage any players waiting behind the Molly. This will be really effective in T's preparing for an execute. In this round, we will see something similar, except this time he will Molotov Upper using Door. He will watch Upper for a little bit, and then when he feels like it's safe, he will throw a HE. Now, instead of Molotoving and watching for players running out, if you are worried the T's are going to execute, you could play Anti Flash. In this round, Jail is going to Molotov Upper, and instead of watching the entrance, he will play anti-flash, hugging the wall and making his way to car. So if the T's were to flash out, he shouldn't be affected. The last option JL might use is something what I'll call the anti-rush. In this, he will use the large majority of his util at the start of the round. In this, he will throw a Molotov and a HE close afterwards. This HE is pretty strong as any T's wanting to rush out from the Molotov is going to eat a fat nid. Softening and slowing them down, making it easier for JL to spray them down. At this point, JL will do something similar to the first option, where he will just wait for any potential players to run out. 
When he feels like it's safe, instead of heaching like he did in the first option, he will instead smoke it. By smoking the entrance, it can deter T's from wanting to push through, allowing your team to take map control like long or short, then later sending a play over to B to double up with you. But it is worth noting the smoke isn't a wall, so it's really important that you keep an eye on it. In round 18 against Astralis, we will see something similar, where he will throw the HE and Molly combo, watch for a little bit, then soon after, throw a smoke. And I just want to quickly note something for you as the B player, as I think it's pretty important for you to know. Typically on Dust 2, your team might start in a 1-1-3 formation. When they take long, one of the A players will come into CT mid, and that player who is already in CT mid will come over to B. So it's important for you to know, when your team either takes long or short, you will soon get an extra player to help you on the B bomb site. And the longer that you can delay the T's from going out into upper, buys more time for your team to work, to later to get that extra player that you want. In this round, Na'Vi has taken long control, so Bit who is in CT mid will come over to B. So in this round, it allows Bit to come over to help JL defend against upper. Now that we know how to defend B at the start of the round, we need to take a look at positioning. Once JL throws his start to util, he will pick a position to play. In this round, JL is going to throw his starting util and play behind Pillar. The angle that JL is playing right now is pretty good, as from this position, he can watch for any T's running out upper, and he won't be affected by T's trying to throw this flashbang. But do note, you are very vulnerable to flashbangs coming from the roof. Later in this round, JL will transition, where he will use the box to jiggle into upper. JL doesn't really do it that much in this round, but the idea of this is to catch a glimpse of the T's if they were trying to lurk out. It is very difficult for the T's to kill you, but if you do spot a T, chances are that they're going to burst out onto the site. So be ready for some gunfights by isolating angles. But the reason why JL stops jiggling is because the T's threw this lurk smoke. This lurk smoke can be pretty dangerous, as it can allow T's to lurk out from the right, middle, or peak above. So JL transitions to back plat to try and prevent this. In round 21, JL is going to play on site and the T's are going to execute. He throws his starting util and the T's won't rush behind it. JL will throw his anti-rush util and play on site. But despite the smoke, the T's are going to push through it. Initially, JL takes his angle where he has a little sliver to look into upper. However, when he spots his flashbang coming in, he's quick to change his position to avoid him being blind. By using this pillar to his advantage, it denies him from being blind from this flashbang and also allows him to isolate angles to take more fair fights. JL will get the kill onto Stan and later plays this angle, where he can watch for any players running onto Platt, later killing Stair. So now that JL has peaked on the left and now on the right, he will switch it up and peek in the middle, where he kills a blind jabby. This right here is a perfect example on how to use the site to your advantage. In all of these situations, JL isn't swinging out into the open, where he isn't completely exposed to a group of T's. Instead, he only peeks out as far as he needs to, so he can take fair fights for him. And he's also changing the angles that he's peeking from three different angles the T's have to worry about, yet have to run into. Again, this round was a perfect example on how to use the site to your advantage. And just so you can see it in real time, I'll play the round again without me babbling on. In round 15, we are going to see again JL use the site perfectly to isolate angles. JL was playing plat, but later transitions onto the site. When he spots the T's throwing flashbangs and util, he knows it's going to be an execute. JL will use the pillar to block flashbangs and peek out to catch any players running out. When he spots Zontix who was pretty far out, he will peek out a little bit more to take him out and then re-angle himself back into upper 
multiple players running through smoke. Now, by far sight is JL's favourite position to play. However, you do need to switch up your angles to make it so you're less predictable. An angle you might enjoy is playing car. The angle that JL is playing right now is pretty standard. However, it's still pretty good. If the T's were to run out, they either need to look at sight or look at car, giving you a 50-50 chance of killing a T who's not looking at you. But later, JL will transition to this angle. Again, this angle is pretty predictable, but from this position, it gives you great cover against T's running out, as your head should be slightly covered from the roof of this car. JL will transition to this off angle, likely because he feels more confident in this angle. As suggested in the name off angle, I believe he's hoping T's won't look at him as they run out. A position we saw at the start of the video is one at Big Box. From this angle, you can just jiggle up her and if you spot any T's or there's an XQ about to come, you can just spot the entrance. But similar to the big box angle, you could play right in front of upper. JL in this round will be jiggling left and right, getting some quick information on upper. And look what happens when he hears the T's pulling their pins for an execute. He immediately smokes the entrance and repositions. It is up to you on where you reposition. In this round, it does look like JL went to car and it is going to be playing anti-flash to try and avoid him being blind but later decides he wants to play in front of the smoke. He does manage to avoid a lot of flashbangs, but unfortunately will get caught by this one. Now, as the B player, you will be playing solo for a little bit, but once your A players have taken short or long control, one of the three A players can come into CT mid, and the player who was already CT mid can double up with you on B, allowing you two to play a setup. You don't have to follow these setups from position to position, but you can listen to this section for ideas. Our first setup is going to be one player window holding CT mid and the other player back plat, allowing both players to hold the entrances. However, when the T's throw this lurk smoke, Bit will take his attention away from mid to help prevent any lurkers. When they believe the smoke is no longer a threat, Bit will transition to doors where he can jiggle for information. And in this round, we will see a similar setup, except this round, Jail has not for some reason. Jail will be holding up her. Meanwhile, Bit will be spotting CT mid from doors. In round 20, we're going to see a door and a side setup with JL spotting CT mid like we saw from Bit. But when the T's throw this lurk smoke, JL will come to assist. JL will throw a counter smoke to try and deny the T's from lurking through. And to make sure they don't come through, he will jump on top of these bricks to prevent them from coming through. Meanwhile, Wonderful will take over CT mid. Now both players have ensured that the entrances are covered and safe. Now the last setup I want to take a look at is one plant and one fence. In this round, we have a player in CT holding CT mid, so they don't need to worry about it. JL will be hiding in this corner, and Wonderful will be taking the attention by holding from Platt. If the T's try to execute, Wonderful should take the attention, and they might not be focused on JL, where he could multi-frag. In this round, they won't get anything, but against Astralis, we will see some action. JL again will be playing Fence, and Bit will be playing on Platt. But while they're in this setup, the T's are going to throw this lurk smoke. Now this could be pretty awkward, so instead of hiding, JL is going to peek out and hold for any players trying to creep up, which could be a nasty surprise for any T's trying to sneak in. JL will take a bit of a risk and peek out a bit deeper, where both players will deal some damage. But now that JL's position is now known, he will try and get out of it by throwing this Molotov, but it's not really gonna matter as Bit will get the kill by playing on top of back plat. But now they have dealt with upper, their player in CT mid has called out that the T's are pushing out doors, so both B players will come in to assist. I do feel like the communication was a bit off here though, as when Bit is peeking, JL is not in position, 
and when JL peaks, bit falls away from the angle, giving the T's potentially easy 3v1s. When watching JL's POV, I've noticed he's quite tactical with his positioning. JL's positioning is very well chosen, allowing him to have protection against enemy flashbangs and isolate fights. He's defensive. JL typically plays defensive at the start of the round with his util to buy time for his team to get map control to then later get an extra man on B. And lastly, he needs to be focal. JL needs to communicate with his partner on B to ensure they have got the entrances covered and also prevent lurks. Want to learn instant connector smokes from T-Spawn on Anubis? Check out the video I made where I showcase all the different lineups you can use to smoke off connector. That video can be found in the description. Apart from that, cheers skin.land for the sponsor. Thanks for watching and see you in a bit.